for getting involved there. You're welcome. And I think your studio looks a little bit bigger there, is that right? Our studio is quite a bit bigger actually, yeah. So we have our 10 foot screen right here and then about 40 feet away we have a 30 foot wide screen that we can project holograms onto as well. And then behind that, the curtain that you can kind of see over there is the capture studio where I just was. Okay, okay. Um, and then um, just give me an idea of, uh, I know we talked about this a little bit already, but, but for now, what are the, the big challenges that uh, you're facing at the moment to, to scale this up to the next level? Uh, well, we have a holopod in development, like I mentioned, to try and mobilize this a little more and shrink the footprint so that we can put it in many different locations. And again, with the advent of 5G, it's really going to reduce latency for us and allow us to be in places that we weren't before just because we'll have a reliable connection. And like I said, as technology evolves, we will evolve along with it. Yeah, fantastic. And from an educational perspective, obviously you can bring in an expert have a top speaker. Do you see it maybe, you know, let's let's go forward 10 years from now, um, February 2030, where could we be with uh, holograms and education? We could have hollow universities where a uh, faculty just meets at one location and they just do classes across the country at different uh, satellite spots. Uh, therefore, people don't have to travel as much anymore. We can educate more people. I think it would just really streamline the entire thing. So what we're looking at in a way is that this is still a video image. So my question is, what's the added value of it just being like a screen with a life-size presentation? How, what does the, the three-dimensionality add to the experience? We're rehumanizing teleconferencing basically because you appear lifelike to me. You look like a 3D person right there, and pretty quickly I forget that you're a hologram, and that's what we've noticed with people coming in and out of demos, people that utilize our technology. You don't realize that it's a 2D image you're looking at almost immediately. Yeah. So I call it sort of for video, we go from 3D to 2D, where the teacher is flattened digitalized, but now what you're actually doing is you're 3 d or three-dimensionalizing that 2D image, so you're putting it back into a much more realistic context. Exactly. Yeah, we are doing that. And, uh, and that also, I think, I guess I'd be interested to see how students respond to uh, a holographic, you know, teacher. I spoke to some of my, to my niece and some of her friends, and they were like, well, we don't want a holographic teacher, we want a real teacher. But in the case that you can't be there with a real teacher, this is a, this is a great alternative. You know what, uh, some of our clients have statistics on this and they find that uh, when someone presents holographically, that there's more retention of everything that they've said, there's more engagement, people remember it longer. It's, uh, we find that being a hologram is actually more effective to get your message across than a person because of the wow factor and you can't look away like yeah. you're incredibly engaged because there is that almost no latency and this is a very human interaction. Yeah, I, I felt a little bit embarrassed when I walked into the studio earlier and you were just waiting there. I sort of felt I was a little bit rude for having kept you waiting. Whereas if it was a, a flat video screen, somehow it just doesn't feel quite as personal as that. Yeah, you're incredibly right. Yeah. Um, of course, the question is, this is the wow factor, the novelty effect. If we just get used to this, is it going to revert to like norm, just this is the new normal? Or do you think there really are qualities in this type of uh, teaching through this format of education that are really different to a flat screen? I think this is very different than a flat screen because like I said, you are actually here with me. Like. I keep forgetting that I am talking to a screen right now. Like you are a surface yeah. with light projected on it, but in my eyes, you are actually here and there is no leg. So yeah. you are an avatar, basically. You are here in the flesh. So I don't think that well, this will that ever go. Experience. Yeah, I have that same experience with you where I feel like I've met you now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we know each other now. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. So that's. That's quite different to maybe a, a Skype meeting or, you know, that it's more two-dimensional. So, uh, fantastic.
Fantastic. Well, listen, I think uh, those were really the questions uh, that, I, that I had and what I wanted to discuss. I really want to thank Art. Did, it, did you say Art Media? Yep. Or, yeah. So I really want to thank Art Media and I want to thank you, Brennan, for being available in Toronto for this live session. And uh, really uh, very excited to see the footage back and to share this incredible uh, experience with my, within my network and with my colleagues. Awesome. Many thanks, Brendan, for your time. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to meet you and have you in today. So we're going to beam you out now so you get that nice effect. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm ready to be beamed away. All right, awesome.